Welcome back. Today we're going to cover Module 1, actually this whole week, and this is Module 1 of six modules that designed to cover one a week, or longer if you need to. Each module I break down into sessions so that you can kind of keep up with where you are. If you want to come back to one of them and redo one, you may. Okay? Now, Session 1. We're going to cover what the brain and how it works. We're going to, going to find out some interesting things there. We're going to look at life experience and its effects on the brain. And it has powerful effects on the brain. And there are keys that we will learn how to change that back around. And then the hijacked brain and its effects on your life and how you see the world and you. Then there's the survival instincts that we learned early in life that are no longer working for you today. And when you get hijacked, they kick in. And you don't, you, most of us are not aware of when that takes place. You're going to gain awareness of that. Now, you say, why do we start with the brain? It is the foundation of what you know. It's the foundation of knowledge and understanding what happens. And when we get into certain situations and we suddenly do things we didn't expect to do. Or we get up later and say, well, why didn't I say that? When you're in a certain situation, says, I could have I could have said this. Or, <laughs> like me, you could have said, why in this world did I say that? It's like, what, what, what went on in my brain? Where, where was I when I said that? Well, part of that is, is that what the brain does when we're in certain situations, when we're in high exam, ex anxiety, stress, or shame. You know, and so understand this is really, really important. So let's go and look at that. Now, if your brain isn't happy, your life's not going to be happy. And so it's key for you. It doesn't make any difference what the other people in your world do. It doesn't make any difference what this affects your perspective on the universe and thus on you. And so this is really important to look at. You know, how do we keep our brain happy? And what I mean by that is safe, calm, you know, balanced. So we'll look at that now. Part of what I want to bring out is the explicit knowledge. And that's kind of the things that we know in the universe, basically. It's like, if I were to say 2 plus 2, you would say 4. Now, that's something we know. Everybody knows. I can do that. Uh, at least anybody up to a certain age and above can do that. Now, if I was to say uh, bicycle, well, you would know what a bicycle was probably, and you would have a picture in your mind. You Okay, we can connect on those levels because you understand, if you speak English, and I say bicycle, you, you know what that is. Now, the difference is is that the inner knower resides in a deeper area of your brain. It's in the limbic system. It's in, that, it's in the place where we're going to talk about later where the monkey and the alligator run things. And so, but it's, and it's the emotional thing. It's your, it's your, your uh, reaction response area where, where we, if we feel like we're in danger, that's what takes over. But it's also the piece of where we, we the inner story of who we are and wh what we experience. Like you know, a minute ago when I said, do you know what a bike is? Yes, you did. Can you tell me how to ride a bike? It can't. But I imagine if you've ever learned before, you can get back on one and ride it. Now, that's implicit knowledge. That's held in that other area. It's hard to articulate it, but you know. That's your inner knower. Now. Where these two come in conflict is this. you got explicit knowledge. Maybe it's like the knowledge of what's going on in your relationship, the knowledge of what you thought your marriage was or what you, who you think you're married to. You know, All of that is explicit knowledge, that what you think has happened in your world for however many years until disclosure came about and you found out that your world was not the same. Before that, explicit knowledge. This is what you thought. This is what you perceived. This is what everybody acted like in your universe of relationships. Now, implicit knowledge is your interpretation. This is my sense that I am in a loving relationship. I am in a faithful relationship. I am special, unique. I am cherished in this relationship. Now, you may feel this way. And then all of a sudden, you know, one of the things that, that and that's what you think, that, that's underneath. And that's based on all the behavior you've seen earlier. Now, the rub is this, and why there's such a different reaction with disclosure is that the addict has always known what's going on in the outside world. He knows what he or she has presented to you. They understand it. That what, they get it what you do and do not know. <laughs> they also know what goes on in the inside world. They know what's, what you don't know. They also know what they struggle with. They know what this, they've been going through and the deeds that they've done. Now, here's the rub in a relationship. 
You thought what you thought was real. You thought your marriage was what it was. You thought your, your spouse was who it was. And you, you thought that whatever years that you'd lived would have been a certain thing. And all of a sudden, one day you wake up and disclosure happens and you realize that it was all an illusion. Not only that, because of the way our brain works, you thought what you was real about you and the, uh, how people responded to you, how loving you were, how cherished you were, how special you were, how on that wedding day there was a promise to, 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 to death do us part kind of thing and, and to be true to you. And then all of a sudden you realize that is not true. That now you're discardable, you're, you're replaceable, you're not enough, you don't measure up, whatever it is, you know, all of a sudden this piece of the brain is now taken over. And it's no longer sure, not only sure of what really happened, you're not sure of who you are in this. So you don't even, you're not real sure of the universe. Now, this really causes a problem in the brain. That's when we go into meltdown. That's when we get into those periods of obsessive thoughts and, and compulsive behaviors and, and running around desperately trying to figure out what in the fat happened in our lives that we don't have a clue about anymore. We're not sure what happened. And it's like we get desperate. We get to a point where it's like the relationship gets sideways with each other. You know, you're trying to control your, the attic in your world. You're getting angry and rageful. Uh, you're, you're melting and going into a corner. And, and, and the attic is looking at you and says, you know, well, listen, I, I told you everything. When are you going to get over this? And when are you going to trust me? Well, you, if your brain is in meltdown, a ah, big chance that's going to ever happen. You can't do it. You're going to be in panic mode. And your brain is going to be hijacked by the lower limbic system. And you're going to be offline. It's just not going to happen. Now, one of the things that I'd like to review just briefly with you is that what we talked about it so that you can go back and listen to this several times and understand we're going to cover it in a number of different ways throughout this, this whole module. What we looked at was a brief overview of the connection between brain function and the centers of knowing and why there's such this trouble. So you addicts that are watching this, understand that this is the reason why they, the spouse struggles so much to trust. It's because so much of their life, they thought they knew and they didn't. And so those two areas of the brain are now in conflict. Now, why is historical can become hysterical? It's because all of a sudden, everything that we thought we knew, Everything that we based what we work on today or go to towards tomorrow has been shattered. We've got to go back and work on this historical data. That's why it's important to know the stories. That's why it's important for the full disclosure. That's why it's important for everybody to know because if without that, the brain is hysterical. It's nuts. Now, the other thing we want to look at is that we did look at and we're beginning to understand, beginning to understand, is how our brains get hijacked is it when there's suddenly the lower part of the brain takes over. And we're going to look at how that in depth in the future, in, in the next session or two, is it how that happens and what we do when that happens. Now, I want you to stop after this, and I want you to spend some time now reflecting. I don't know if I've stirred up a lot of things when I've brought up history or, you know, information, but what I'd like you to do is find a place. Now, this is assignments that I don't want couples doing at the same time together. I want you to do this separate. Let me just give you a warning here. This is going to bring up a lot of emotions, a lot of feelings and so forth. And guess what part of the brain that is? Yes, you got it. And so I would suggest, strongly suggest that if you're watching this video together, husbands or spouse, husbands go in one direction, wives go in another direction, and you work on this separately. I don't want you sharing this with each other. Now, begin with a quiet place and reflect on your experiences from your perspective. Not what the other perceives from your perspective. When you felt betrayed or deceived, or when you knew you were betraying and perceived, deceived. Or maybe you've been tr betrayed earlier in your life. Now, I want you to write in your journal these experiences. Put them down. And then, then recall how you felt. If you can remember how you felt in these times when all of this came up, I want you to write them down and just be aware. Scan your body. Where do you carry those feelings? Or maybe you still currently feel that. <laughs> and those emotions are still running crazy inside there. Where do you carry those? Is there anger? Is there sadness? Is there fear? Where do you carry that? I want you just to notice it and write it down. Now, record all this. And as things come up, keep your journal handy. Now, guys, if there's a husband and wife, husband and wife watching this, 
or partners watching this, I don't want you butt messing with each other's journal. Those are sacred. You stay away from them. This is internal, personal stuff. We're working on the inside out. We're working on special stuff, sacred stuff. This is very special, and we want to treat it that way. A, a strict boundary at this point is you don't, you, I don't even recommend for the first week or so you sharing much of this. I, I want you to spend time just allowing it to come up for you. That each of you are writing what's, what's in, what's, what comes up. What are you feeling? What do you, I want you to be aware. Awareness brings clarity. All right? Now, this is the, this, this is the end of session 1-1. One, one. You take time out. Do, the, do this assignment. I, I suggest you take it a day. You know, take time off to do this. I'll see you next.